What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna try to replicate the black and white nature photography style from David Yarrow. Now this video was suggested by one of you guys in the comment section on a previous video by White Tusks and by reading his comment what I understand is that both David Yarrow and also William Fortescu share a similar type of color grading or similar type of edit. So David Yarrow is a very renowned photographer, he takes photos of athletes, of celebrities, documentary type photography but he also takes a lot of wildlife photography. Now William Fortescu, he basically is a nature or wildlife photographer. So that's the point where these two profiles coincide and looking at their styles they're very similar to each other. So you know how this works, first of all we're going to check out some examples of images shot by these two creators and see the main characteristics so when we jump into Lightroom we have the knowledge to edit a photo and create a preset out of it. So let's get to it. Okay so here we have their profiles on Instagram, this is David Yarrow and as you can see he takes a lot of shots of famous people, here we have Cara de la Vinge, Haaland over here, but if we scroll down we can start to see the nature photography creeping in and it's very different to when he shoots some models. Right here we can see more impactful images, very dramatic and contrasty. And the same thing applies if we jump into William Fortescu's profile or I don't know how it's pronounced, I'm just winging it. But right here we have his style and you can see that it's very similar. You can see loads of texture, loads of clarity, loads of contrast. And yeah, I can see why White Tusk included them in the same tutorial or same suggestion because they're very similar to each other. Having said that, now let's see what they do in the editing department so we can try to replicate that in digital photography. So I'm not really interested if they used analog, if they used digital. Uh, the main point of my tutorials is to learn how to color grade in digital photography. So right here, the first thing that comes to mind is the exposure and contrast because we have a very punchy looking image in both David Yarrow's and also Will Fortescu's images. And the first thing that we can see is how the skies have loads of information. We can see all the details in the clouds, even though this is a very overcast day. And this is gonna be a constant throughout their images. We're gonna see the skies that have loads of information. And this is telling me that they're lowering the highlights, whether it be in the tone curve or in the basic corrections. That's a great hint. Every time you see loads of detail in the sky, which is a bit unnatural, uh, that's because they're lowering the highlights. Then in dark points on our image, we also have loads of information points where should be a very contrasty, losing a lot of detail in the dark points, they're raised up. So they're reducing the highlights and raising up the shadows. So we have an image that has loads of information. Then you may be asking, so where does the contrast come in? The contrast is in the extremes. You can see how the whites over here are very bright, pure whites in the contrast in this crocodile. And then the blacks are very deep. So the extremes of our images, they're pulling them away from each other. So we have loads of contrast, but in the center where our subject is gonna be, the midtones, we have loads of information. So that's basically the recipe to achieving this contrasty look. Now, the other thing that comes to mind when I'm looking at these images is how the subject, the lion, the gorilla in this case, really stand out from the frame. They're basically popping out of the image. And that's because they're adding a lot of clarity, a lot of texture, a lot of sharpness into the image in post edition. So once you are accustomed to working around with the sliders of texture and clarity, it's very evident when an image does have these sliders applied. So right here we can see this lion where you can see all the details, all the contrast in the fur, which is a bit unnatural. Normally the images coming out from camera are a bit less sharp, a bit less contrasty. And this is a clear evidence in my eyes that they're pushing the clarity and the texture in the presence tab way over the 50%. So we're gonna look into that when we jump into the presence tab as well. So this is a concern that we're gonna see in most of the images where you have a very central subject and you want to make the scene very impactful and very dramatic. Now, finally, we have a little variant over here for Will Fratescu, uh, where we have this uh, type of color grading, which is black and white, and then he adds a bit of a sepia tone, a bit of an orangey reddish tone, and you can do this in the color grading department, but also in the tone curve. So we're gonna take these photos as an inspiration to create our own presets. We're gonna create two today, um, the contrasty one and then the sepia one. You guys from there can create all the variants that you want. So we're gonna jump into Lightroom and start editing. But before that, I'm gonna remind you that these two presets are already in the Editac Preset Pack V3. Link up here to my shop in case you wanna check it out. In the Editac V3, you're gonna find all the presets that we've created in the Editac series throughout this season. So that's a great way you can skip all my tutorials and the process you can support me. Also, just browse on my shop. Maybe you find some of my personal presets that I use to edit all my photos. If you follow me on Instagram, all my photos over there are edited with my personal presets. All my videos on YouTube with my personal LUTs. Maybe you find them useful to edit in a faster manner and the process you can support me. So I continue to do videos for you guys. So if you can support me, thank you. And if not, don't worry guys, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. Okay, creators, I can bet that some people are gonna get a bit angry right here and even leave the video. Why? Because as you can see, I don't have any wildlife photography. 
Why? Because I'm not a wildlife photographer, I'm not even a photographer. But the main purpose of this tutorial is to replicate the color grading and not the photo. So I'm just gonna use one of these images of my dogs, which will work perfectly to create the edit. So I'm just gonna select, I think, this one of my dog Lupita. With T on my keyboard, I'm gonna move to the develop module. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is change this image into black and white. I can do this in several manners. I'm just gonna select V on my keyboard to move into the monochrome profile. If you can't find the key, you can always go over here and select black and white or go into profiles and select Adobe Monochrome. What this is doing is changing the way that Lightroom is reading your file. So it's reading as it's black and white. So right here, as you can see, vibrance and saturation, we cannot move them. And down here, we don't have in color mixer, we don't have saturation, neither do we have hue. So let's start off by creating this contrasty look. And remember what we want to do is bring more information into the midtones while creating the contrast in the extremes, in the whites and the blacks. We're gonna use the basic corrections for that, which is highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, presence tab, in conjunction with the tone curve. Now, as you can see, I didn't mention exposure and contrast, neither white balance, because these three tools, these three tools, I like to leave them at zero, not include them in the preset. So these are the sliders that I move if maybe my image was poorly shot on field. For example, this, this image that we have over here was poorly shot on field, and therefore I had to compensate with the exposure, but I don't want this value of 1.2 stops of exposure to be added into the other images when I apply the preset. So that's why I'm gonna omit these and don't pay attention to these. Start off with the highlights. So highlights will control most of the bright points on our image, including the sky. And on, in all of the example images, we have loads of information in the sky. So what we're gonna do is not go towards the positives, otherwise we introduce more brightness and any detail in the clouds is gonna disappear and we're just gonna have a white blurb. So what I'm gonna do is go towards the negatives. Not too much, otherwise it's way too flat, but maybe around the minus 50s is gonna be enough. The values that I'm gonna introduce over here, you guys can play around. They're just tentative values, you guys can go higher, a bit lower depending on what you want. Shadows, in this case, not gonna go towards the negatives, otherwise we lose some detail in the midtones. We want to do just introduce a bit more brightness and more detail in the dark points on our image. Not too much, but ever so slightly up, maybe around the plus 15, and it's, and it's just giving us a bit more information in these type of areas on our image. So right now, you may be asking yourselves, so where does the contrasty look come from? So it comes from the whites and the blacks, in particular for this tab. So these are the extremes on our image. Highlights and shadows are more towards the midtones. Meanwhile, the extremes, the darkest points are controlled by the blacks, and the whitest points are controlled by the whites. So what I'm gonna do with the whites is put it towards the positives. So we introduce more brightness in the brightest points on our image. And then the blacks, I'm gonna do the opposite, not towards the positives, but towards the negatives. And I don't wanna go too hard because otherwise we have a very dramatic image. Actually, it looks quite interesting because we only have the eye correctly exposed. Everything else is very punchy, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ever so slightly down, maybe around the minus 15, so I have a contrasty look. Okay, so our image is looking very contrasty, but it's not quite enough. We need to double down this contrast that we already added. And the perfect tool to do that is the tone curve. Now the tone curve can basically do the same things that we did in the basic corrections, but I like to use it as a second layer to make more of a dramatic edit. So the tone curve, as you can see, it's just composed of this graph where you have this line, which is our curve or the representation of our image in this graph. And if you drag any point on your image, for example, this point in the middle, We'll control the midtones of our exposure towards the positives. We introduce more brightness into the midtones. Towards the negatives, we introduce more darkness. So it's a very simple and intuitive tool, but it does require a bit of practice. In this case, we're not going to add any point. We're not going to divide our image. I'm just going to move this point that will control the whites. I'm not going to move it down. Otherwise, we attenuate those whites. I don't know if that's a word. I'm going to go towards the left to introduce more brightness into our whites. And not too much. Otherwise, well, this is too contrasty maybe a value around these lines, and it's gonna be 235 the input and 255 the output, which are, these two values are just basically the coordinates of this point. And then the blacks, I don't wanna go towards the positives, towards the top, uh, otherwise we'll introduce more gray into our image, more brightness. I'm gonna to go towards the right to introduce a punchier look. Now, of course, I wanna be a bit reserved with the amount that I'm sliding over here, so I'm gonna go maybe on the plus 15, plus 14 in the input, output is gonna be zero. And there we have a contrasty look. So can deactivate the tone curve, this is before and after, just adding a bit more punch into our image. 
Okay, so our image is looking very contrasty and dramatic, but we're still missing that extra step that makes all the details in the fur really stand out, what we saw in the lion images, for example. So what I'm gonna do is move into the presence tab. Let me zoom in into my image just a bit. And what I'm gonna do is push around the clarity. Clarity, what it will do is just add more contrast into the midtones or reduce it. Towards the negatives, you can see how the difference between the bright points and the dark points in our midtones becomes a bit of a blur and becomes just this gray mesh. And towards the positives, notice how it becomes more dramatic and we can see clearly the difference between the white hairs and the black hairs creating a very dramatic effect. Obviously, I don't wanna to go to the plus 100 because, well, this image was shot with a high ISO. And as you can see, if I push the clarity lower or higher, that noise that we have over here becomes a lot more evident. So you always have to keep in mind if you shot your image with high ISO, clarity will add more detail or more emphasis into the noise as well. So maybe you may consider adding a denoising filter afterwards or just don't push around the clarity too much. But I'm gonna go quite high on the plus 65 just to make our image very dramatic. Then texture where we'll add is more digital sharpness. So not towards the negatives, we reduce it. I'm gonna go towards the positives just to add more punch into the fur, maybe around the plus 40. And right here, our image is very dramatic and very intense. Now, keep in mind that if you're pushing clarity and texture towards the positives and your central subject is not an animal, but it's a human, all the imperfections and details in the skin are gonna stand out. So all the wrinkles around the eyes, all the pimples, the pores. So it's a good practice if you're shooting models or people to not, to not push the clarity towards the positives, rather just drag it ever so slightly towards the negatives. So all those imperfections are a bit hidden away. Okay, so right here, our first preset is complete. This is the contrasty version and it just looks dramatic. It looks fantastic. Let's save it, apply it into a couple of other images to see if we did a good job of or if we exceeded a bit of the contrast in some areas. So let's save it. To save a preset, I'm gonna to go to the left panel over here on the presets, hit the plus sign, create preset. Right here, I wanna mark all the tools that I used and tools that I didn't use, for example, white balance, exposure and contrast, these, I'm not gonna mark them. Okay, so I have this image of this beautiful cow of my neighbor, let's apply the preset. So I've already saved over here, David Yarrow, contrast, and it looks fantastic. Notice the amount of contrast that we added without losing a lot of information or detail on our image. Also, notice how much sharpness and contrast we have in the fur. That's because what we did in the presence tab over here. And this image is very impactful and very dramatic. I think we did quite a good job. Now, this preset obviously has the presence tab, but you can always save the preset or a little variant of this preset without the presence tab. So you can apply this edit. For example, let me reset the presence tab. And it's a lot softer, a, little, a lot more forgiving. If you're shooting maybe lifestyle photography, celebrity photography like David Yarrow, um, we can always save, obviously save this preset with a little modification. So I'm gonna save this one as another variant over here without the presence tab. Now, obviously the lighting situation when you're taking the photo comes into account when you're creating dramatic styles. So for example, in this image, we have a very contrasty image because the light of the morning is hitting my dog Emmett over here. If we apply the contrasty version of the preset, you can see that it's very emphatic and we're losing a lot of information over here. We have just a white blur. So you can always correct this by just dragging a bit of the white towards the negatives, just to make your white a little bit more forgiving. But in other senses, it's just looking fantastic. Notice the amount of information and amount of detail and contrast that we have in the fur over here. Now, in comparison in an image which has a bit of a softer exposure, a softer light, we're gonna see that the preset performs a bit differently. So right here, I'm gonna apply it once again, and it looks fantastic. We have a very dramatic looking image with some contrast added and some detail, it just looks fantastic. And you can always play around, this is the contrasty version and then the one without the presence tab and it's a little bit softer and less intense. So I think we did quite a good job with these two presets. It creates a very intense and interesting look. Now let's take advantage that we're in this nice image of my beautiful dog and let's create the sepia variants that we saw in Will's photos. So we have two tools that we can use to create the sepia variants because we can't use the temperature tab over here. Notice if I push around temperature, I'm not adding any cool tones or any warm tones. I'm just adding some exposure or contrast. So white balance is out of the picture. Instead, we can use either the color grading tools that we have over here. We can just add a tint into our image, into global color wheel. Or in this case, just to exercise a bit of different tools, we're gonna use the tone curve. In the tone curve, we have over here the RGB channels and we can add some hues, slight hues into our image as well. So let's create that orangey tone. And first of all, we're gonna add a point here in the blue yellow curve in the middle, in the midtones. 
and I'm not going to go towards the positives, otherwise I'll introduce more blue, like an indigo, black and white. I'm going to go towards the negatives, towards the right bottom corner, to introduce more yellow. Now, not too much, but I'm just going to add ever so slightly just below the diagonal, and just going to be the slightest of movement below the diagonal, 117 in the input, 114 in the output, just adding a little bit of yellow into our image. But if we take a look at our example image, in particular the ones of the lion shot by Will Fortescu, we can see that it's not a yellow tint, neither it's an orange tint, it's more of a brownish tint. So what I need to do is combine this yellow that we added in this curve with some red in the red and emerald curve over here. So again, I'm going to create a point in the midtones, and I'm not going to drag it towards the negatives, I'll go introduce some uh, emerald colors, so I'm going to go towards the positives. Not too much, otherwise this is red, this is horrible. But just above the diagonal over here, just adding a slightest hint of red so it's combining with the yellow of the other curve. And the value is going to be 109 in the input and the output is going to be 112. And if I deactivate the tone curves, this is before and after. And now we have that contrast and that brownish tint added into the entirety of the image. So let's save this preset as another variant and quickly just test it out in a couple of scenarios. Okay, so here I have this image of this mini lion or domesticated lion. First of all, let's apply the contrasty version. And as you can see, it's very dramatic, very punchy. And you can see the difference in terms of detail and sharpness. It looks fantastic. Then we can apply the version which doesn't have the contrast, which is a bit softer. Immediately you can notice the difference. And over here, I named this one David Yarrow and Will Fortescu Sepia because, well, it's a, combina it's a combination of the two styles. And here we have it, just adding a little bit of that brownish tint into our image, that slight sepia tone without losing the contrast. Lastly, just a little image of my dogs to see how it performs in a bright sunny day. So let's apply first of all the one without the presence tab, which is very forgiving. It's a very natural looking black and white, quite contrasty. And then we add the contrasty version and we can notice the slight, the change. We have so much more contrast in the fur of the dogs. And then the sepia version just adds a little bit of warmth into the image. So there you have it, guys. That's how I would achieve a similar type of color grading to David Yarrow or William Fortescu. And I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video. And remember that these three presets that we created today are in the Edelike Prism Pack V3, but also the Edelike LUT Pack V3. So I've reconverted all these Lightroom presets into LUTs, so you can apply them into your video as well. Also, just take a look at my shop. Maybe you find something over there useful and you can support me so I continue to do videos for you guys. And if you can't, if it's not in your possibilities, don't worry, guys. Just like the video, subscribe, comment something down below, or something that actually helps me out is sharing my videos on social media, whether it be in your X account, whether it be in Facebook groups, or in your Instagram stories. That helps me out quite a bit. Without further ado, I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.